welcome to another episode of CNG Railways with me, Carburetor. Today, well, last episode, it's probably going to be titled along with something of putting the uh, horse before the cart. Well, now it's time to go to the cart. It is time to bring the iron mine to the smelter. Now, I've been playing around here a little bit. I've tried making this loop work, and it really doesn't work. So I'm probably going to end up just deleting it and having it set this rail is kind of like the only thing up here. And I might make like a shunting yard up here, but I don't really have a reason to. I had to bring this stuff back. I was kind of playing with a buddy. He kind of didn't want to, uh, he kind of didn't want to walk up here. He kind of wanted to take the uh, Eureka on a test drive. And he also had a, um... He created a bit of a mess at the freight depot, so I get to clean that up later. Thank you, Loki. But anyway, let's get on. I uh, I've already done some clearing, so let me uh, let me get to certain points. The, basically, I'm just gonna follow this ridge, but there's a few points that I kind of want to point out. That if you are building your own railway, you might run into situations here. So I figured I would share them with you. Let me uh, let me run all the way down there, and I can share them with you. Okay, so we are at the first hurdle. I fixed that crouching thing, so it no longer crouches when I uh, when I cut clips. So you're welcome. <laughs> but this is going to be the first hurdle I need to kind of tackle. Now, it's not that big of a hurdle, but it is something I need to, to address, and that's that coming down this slope here, I had to go down to a six degree angle. That doesn't sound like much, but most locomotives are limited to like a two or three degree slope. So, I have been thinking. And I know that sounds a little bit scary to some people who know me. And I don't even think that's going to work. I was going to try and come along the outside of this ridge here. But that's just not going to work. So what else can I do here to try and minimize the slope angle? Because I obviously, I, I don't want to make this very high up like this. I mean, even this, I mean, I, I think this is like six degrees right here and look at how tall this wall is. Unfortunately, I don't think there's much I can do. The only thing I can really do is try and create a straight edge at the bottom so that I don't go flying off the rails. Yeah, I think that's the only thing I can really do. I can't think of anything else I could do to try and fix this. Ooh, actually. Thinking, I'm thinking. No, it, it really wouldn't work. What I was thinking, just going to share it and you guys can point and laugh at me. I was thinking if I come off at the top of that ridge, I could make a bridge going all the way to this point here, but it really wouldn't work. I don't think that would work. No, that wouldn't work. Go off. Yeah, that I'm just gonna have to try and work with this and make it as best as I can and just sort of work with what I've been given. But anyway, let's get to the next thing and uh, I can share with what I'm going to be doing. So this is the next issue. I don't know if you can see it. It's way off in the distance over there, but you can barely see the smokestack of the smelter. I need to somehow get the rail line from this ridge over to that ridge. Unfortunately, I have done a lot. And I do mean a lot of scouting. I mean, they, let me pull up the pay screen. I'm dang near $5,000 in the hole. And just to put it in perspective, when I started exploring, I was positive about 500. So yeah, I have gone in the hole just by cutting down trees $2 at a time. That means I've cut down 
dang near 3,000 trees and I'm still cutting. Why am I still cutting? That's because this is where the rail line's gonna come. Uh, I have tried, tried, tried to find out how I would get down this ridge and down onto that plateau. Now, it looks like it would be pretty simple. It's not. It is not. I have tried and tried and tried, and there's just, there's no good way to do it. I could come, I would love, really, really, really love to have a trestle bridge in front of this waterfall. Oh my lord, that'd be so beautiful. The problem is not getting to the waterfall. The problem is getting down this ledge in a way that looks halfway realistic. That's my thing, is I am very much trying to re keep this thing in how would people have done this realistically. Not how would, you know, not how could I do this in the video game. I'm trying to stick to what the kind of developers wanted me to do to stay within the spirit of the game. So, let me hop back up to the top of this ridge. I'm trying to clear this because I would love to still be able to see the waterfall, and unfortunately you can't see the uh, forest through the trees. So, yay. If we open up the map again, you can kind of see that this is kind of a plateau up here. And essentially this is going to be how I branch off and go from the smelter to the coal mine and the iron ore mine. I forget what the coal mine needs. But I know that I need to go there eventually, and that's how I'm going to do it. I'll be able to work the uh, Iron Mine Railroad onto here. I do kind of hope they eventually add uh, signs or boards or something that you can place down. I'm thinking kind of like Thomas the Tank Engine there. You know, one of the very first episodes, you know, engines must not pass this board or whatever, I think. Honestly, I think that'd be hilarious to have at a uh, little mining facility. Engines must not pass this board. But you can see where it comes down from the uh, hill here. I've worked all my way down here. You can barely see the iron mine all the way off there in the distance. I do like that it renders in. I hope YouTube has not decompressed this to the point that you guys can't see it. But I'm planning on bringing the train down this way, across this plateau, and eventually down, up, or over and around, down this hill. Gonna jump down here. To this spot right here. You can kind of see it's got a natural valley and a perfect little branch off point to put a trestle bridge right over the right over the uh, river. I think this is going to look really nice. It's going to be really cool, really smooth. That runs right down into the smelter, so it's going to be really nice. Luckily, I don't plan on running too many really heavy trains. They might be really long trains, but I'm hoping they'll remain pretty lightweight as they come down. What I could even just do is just disconnect the lumber cars at the top of the hill. Give them a little push down so they go all the way down because I believe it goes all the way down until that Y. I can bring the iron cars over and around. Drop them off at the smelter. By the time I get back around, the lumber cars should already be there. And should already be ready for me to hook back up to and ready to refill and go back to the top. Yeah, I really want to see this waterfall as I'm coming along this uh, this line. If I can't at least pass in front of the waterfall, I at least want to pass by the waterfall. So, I've got a little bit of work cut out for me. I think I need to get back to laying, uh, laying my groundwork and trying to figure out how I'm going to make this look very nice and very realistic. Alright, so I'm all the way down here at where the bridge is going to be. And I thought I would take some time just to share this with you. So I don't know if anybody noticed, but those bridges up there were curved. And I figured I would show you guys how you guys can do that. So what I'm going to do first off is just count how many of these side rails I have. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 12, 13, 14, 15. Perfect, actually, that we want an odd number. So on the eighth rung, I'm just going to go ahead and hang this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just going to hang it just like that. And that's just for a marker for myself. Come over here, grab the bridge. And I actually want to move it in a little bit over here. So I'm going to hit that penny right or that hit nail right on the head right there. I'm going to come here. <coughs> and I'm going to select that little nail right there. Now, how do I get it to curve over? Well, if you hit the left alt, and then you can actually toggle it over. And of course, it's not going to do it because... Oh, wait, no, there it goes. Is it? Yeah, that's going. So... You can see it's curving right there, but it's not curving exactly how I want. So if you hold the shift, you can use incrementals and have it go right like that. So place it. Let's come in here and demolish. Do I like it though? Crap. Before I delete it, I need to make sure that I like it. You know what, actually, I, I, um, it has a slight whipping action here at the end, but I think that's just from the straight piece. So let's go ahead and demolish the straight piece. I don't know if that's just my eyes playing tricks on me, but it almost looks like it's got a slight whipping action and it's not perfect. It's far from it. I would actually like a tighter curve because I've got a I'm, I want to instantly go right into a curve down this way so I need this side to come over also so let's hit that now the center is already marked by this crap by the little double joint there so I no longer need to rely on the uh, little life jacket like thing hanging off the end there so i can select right there and then have it come in you don't actually need to hit the left alt apparently have it come down and select do i like it it's a little bit more curved Problem is now it's not centered. I want it more centered. This is just, this is going to be kind of, you know, like how you need to play with it. So I think that needs to go further over, actually. So I think it needs to start over here. Yeah, it needs to start over here, hit there, and then go over. So let's... Grab that. Let me start there. No. Let's. I'm going to grab off there. I'm going to come to the center here. Kind of like that. And then curve it over. Such. Let's go ahead and demolish the other two. I want it to have still more of a curve to it, but I like where it is over here. So, grab, go a little bit further out, 
pick right here. Shoot. I want to share with you guys how, you know, how I learn with this game too. I want a little bit more of a curve. So let's demolish those. I don't know why there were multiples there, but there were. I don't think this is perfect. I don't think I'm going to get this perfect, but I like... I want more of a curve still, but I like where these ends are kind of. This needs to move over just a little bit, so... Let's grab... This could actually move in a little bit, so. Work small, I'd rather make. Have to go back and reshape it. I don't get why it has that slight whipping action at the end. I don't know if you guys are seeing that, but it looks like it's whipping out. I don't know why it does it. Let's retry making this. Let's... Should have paid attention to what the curve was before I, before I made it. Alright, so I'm at a 5 degree turn right there. So let's delete this guy, the first little straight piece. Let's grab here, go down to over five. Let's see if that gets rid of the slight whipping action. Ooh. And I can't be the only one seeing that, can I? Like, that has a definite, like, whip action to it, doesn't it? Why is it... Like, I thought maybe I was just going crazy when I was working on it on the last bridge, but maybe I'm not. Start with... Enough. Here... I don't know why it's giving me that whipping action. I don't know. I don't get it. Oh, I think I'm just going to have to live with it, though. Hope nobody really notices. But, um, yeah, I don't remember if I already said this also. It's late at night here, but this had to be six degrees down. So, yeah, it looks like I got to live with a limit of six degrees. I was hoping to live with a limit of four degrees, but... Limits are meant to be broken, I guess, or at least that's what I told the officer last time I got pulled over. But anyway, let's, uh, I'm gonna continue going down. Hopefully I can get all the groundwork laid. I kinda need to go 
back over the groundwork up here. <laughs> Still got a little bit of soreness in my throat from when I was sick, so I'm constantly having to clear my throat for some reason. I used to do it a lot as a kid, and I thought I had grown out of it, but apparently it's back. I wonder what they meant this kind of ledge for also. Like, this would kind of be a cool ledge for making something, but I don't see what it could go to. But, as you can see, I've got the uh, basic groundwork laid out. I like that I kind of run along this ridge here, but if we look over here, you can kind of see... It doesn't, it's not exactly the most fluid. Uh, that's the end of one line over there where I was trying to figure out how I'm going to bring it from, from down there to up here. So, yeah. I need to go back through and make that a little bit cleaner. One thing I'm also trying to do is I'm trying to future-proof this. Holy cow, look at the turn going down there also. That looks really cool. I'm trying to future-proof this by trying to kind of plan a route out to the uh, coal mine, but again, easier said than done. Let's demolish that. I kind of missed when I, which uh, edge I was going down when I was just sort of going through the woods. That's why there's no more woods here, and that's why I'm now 6,000 in the hole. Oh, it's going to take me a while to pay this back. Alrighty, so, and I know I say alrighty a lot, I... I've had a few people pick on me for that. This is one of the next steps that I kind of take in laying groundwork like this. Is after I've laid the rail bed on top, I go back through and I delete the underlying groundwork. Now, some people might ask, well, why? That groundwork was working. Why did you delete it? Well, I'm going to use the rail on top as the laying guide. No idea what I just deleted right there. I saw something get deleted. As the laying guide, and I can adjust the elevations a little bit more precisely when you're looking up and down. When you're looking from on top of it down on it, you can sort of see a little bit more with what you're working with. Whereas if you're just laying along as you're walking right here, oftentimes it's very easy to actually get buried in the groundwork so you can't see what you're working on. And then, <coughs> sorry, um, then I basically go through and I relay the rail. And I use the rail, like I said, as a guide for getting, you know, too close to, if I get too close to a ledge right here where it melds in, well, I don't really want that. So I'll relay the rail, go back through and relay the groundwork again. And you kind of do it over and over and over again until it's good enough. The trick is learning when to walk away you're always going to have issues it's never going to be perfect and oftentimes you can hit something at like let's say you get it like 95 percent perfect let's say it's 95 percent there 95 percent what it needs to be you know just what you need and then you go back through and you decide you know what i want to get it a little bit closer but then the next time you do it, it's not at 95, it's at like 90%. Well, you just went backwards. So you kind of need to figure out where to walk away and to sort of say, this is good enough, I can live with this. And it's it's a very tricky thing to do. It's very tricky. You can see I deleted the switch work up here. It really wasn't working. Grab the variable. Does that line up right there? That does not line up worth a dang. Let's go a little bit further back. <clears throat> I'm just going to go right to where it melds. And let's back. Betsy up here. Fuel is out. So that says how long I've been working on this. I'm actually going to go back over these switches and delete these switches. A little bit fast there. I wouldn't be surprised if carts fly off the rails. Alright, let's 
Let's throw guy down. That guy down. And then I want to show you guys a little trick, actually, that I just learned. I just figured this out, and I'm kind of ashamed about it. But if I grab the rails here, and I go to here, this is set straight. But if I hit the Alt key, that engages the radius. So, and it's not going to show it until I place it, but just trust me that it will. But now... No matter where I move, it's forward. So I no longer need to lay thousands of miles of double-ended track like this. All I need to do is lay, or of the crossover track like this, all I need to do is lay two to kind of get it started, to kind of get it aimed, and then I can just run with it. Literally just run with it and just start laying, and it'll be perfectly straight. Look at how straight that is. You could fire a bullet down that. That is perfect. Alright, so right here is the crossover. Grab from here. Okay, and then I just run with this all the way down. Obviously stopping at bridges, because I can't go over bridges. And you kind of want to pay attention to like how the rail is laying on top of it, because you can't remember what all the grading is. You see how the rail is starting to disappear there? So I know it's probably at 1% here. And you just pay attention. If the rail looks like it starts floating, you want to pull it back up, but you don't want it to be so bad that it's unwatchable. But anyway, let's continue on here, and I will link back up with you guys after I've made this run and linked the rest of this stuff together. So I'm going back through here now, and I just wanted to showcase this. Just by going through there, I was able to drop that, I would say, a solid, what would you say? I'd like to call that six inches. I think that's stretching it, I think, more like three or four inches. doesn't sound like much, but it does kind of help the side profile here to kind of try and keep the... This almost looks like a retaining wall, to tell the truth. The, the variable stonework to keep it a little bit more close to ground. Now I did get a little too close to ground over here, but I don't think it's going to matter that much. I think I'm going to go back over it like right now actually and just sort of try and build it up. <laughs> yeah, I got way too close to ground here. Tell the truth, being up here is kind of where I want to be. Part of the uh, learning process because, yeah, see how I went a little bit too deep into the mountain there? Raising it would actually help because it would raise the lip up and out of the mountain. This is a roller coaster ride, though. This is going to be, honestly, this is going to be a fun ride going down this. And you can see also where I sort of smoothed it out a little bit. I buried the tracks a little bit, which kind of goes against what I was just saying, but it managed to smooth out the ride a little bit more, which is more what I'm looking for than just sort of trying to reduce the profile as much as possible. I want to make it so that it's as realistically as I can. You know, I, I'm not looking for it to be perfect. I'm looking for it to be good. There's a difference. And then I am going back through and putting uh, rail decks on, so... Yippee! More, uh, more work to do. Although, honestly, speaking of more work to do, I'm thinking about redoing this line over here. I found some interesting things while I was exploring, and it's something that I would like to further explore. So, uh, remember what I was just saying about, uh, about that? Yeah. One thing about, about this world, 
there's never going to be a lack of just like things to do you know you can always go back through oh i want to smooth out this line oh i want to do this oh, i want to do that and you'll always be busy you will always always be busy but anyway let me lay down my trestle rail deck and then i'm actually going to call it a night and come back with a, a little bit more of a fresh face than what i have right now figured i'd give you guys another quick update because i haven't given you guys enough of those but i have kind of solved my roller coaster dilemma and that is with a trestle bridge so i was watching cosmos con and dapper i believe take a run on Cosmos server. I'm, I, I'm not actually subscribed to Cosmos. I am to Dapper and to Khan. So I'm a little bit more familiar with those two, but watching their exploits together, I was able to, uh, to see that I'm not crazy for how I made this line over here. Um, Cosmos followed very much the same structure, except instead of the stone bridge work, he used steel trestle. Like this. Which I'm not really using too much, and that's not because it's not aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing. It is. It looks pretty nice for what it is. However, when you think the 18... It, when when it, when is this based? Okay, so first off, that's a question for just in general. Like, when is this based? For me, this is based in the 1850s, 1860s, 1870s. The very first steel bridge, the actual first steel bridge, was the Eads Bridge made by, by Andrew Carnegie in... I, I can't remember what year. I know it was the I know it was the 1870s, but I don't even remember if it was early or late. I want to say 1874 is when it was completed, and that was kind of the first use of steel in the industry. The before that, everything was very much wood trestles, and even after that, especially especially in mountain railroading. Everything was wooden trestles. And I'll tell you the reason why. Why did they go into the mountains in history? To get iron. Well, if you're spending iron to get the iron, you're at a net loss. So what did they typically build with? Lumber. Because lumber was everywhere. Especially in the lumber industries. Now, I know this is going to sound weird. But hear me out, especially in the lumber industry, they would use lumber. And you'd kind of go, well, wait a minute, didn't you just say in the iron industry, why would they waste iron? Well, here's the thing. In the lumber industry, they can only really use from here to about here. So you still have quite a bit of stick up there that you really can't use anywhere else. And that's what the very first railroad beams and railroad trestles really were, is squared off versions of the tops of trees <laughs> and oftentimes cordwood bundles like what we need to bring to the smelter eventually were even parts of that sawed off top you know you'd have the big round logs that went into whatever and then you'd have the uh you'd have the sawed off tops that would be used for making trestles for making railroad ties for making whatever and then the stuff that they didn't make on top of that typically went into cordwood bundles. And cordwood was typically sold for firewood use. That's basically what it was used for. It's probably what it's used for in the smelter, at least like in-game. That's what it's used for, but I'm getting off track. But anyway, making it like this, this is a steady 3% grade all the way up. So I no longer have the roller coaster whoop. I am going to have a slight little... 6% section in here, but I'm going to have a nice long straight section of 4% that I can try and regain the locomotive in. This is not going to be the only 6% grade, but I hope to keep it limited. But anyway, uh, 
It's late at night. Again, I don't know if you can tell that typically why I'm rambling is because it's late at night and I'm tired. So I'm going to call it quits for tonight and going to continue working on this. I already have, I, I have some other work I need to do. So this is probably going to be a rest of the week deal. Thank the Lord I planned ahead a little bit and started recording this ahead of time. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Give you guys a couple of all rights there. It is all done, but this is a really, really, really long time later. They introduced an update which basically broke the game. Now, granted, it they did fix the game relatively quickly, but it kind of put me off the game for a little bit. But I have been grinding on the game. So... They just released another update and I'm it seems like every single time they release an update they they break the game then they fix the game they break the game then they fix the game I'm just gonna focus on what they did this time so they've obviously it's Christmas time this is actually on the 20th that I'm recording this and the last recording was probably over two weeks ago now yeah it got a little bit busy at my real job not my pretend job which this kind of is and it's i just have no energy to record but the line down to the smelter is done the line around the smelter is done and the line back up is done so while we are traveling there and you guys are enjoying the scenery i figured i would talk a little bit about what they've added so they've nerfed the porter again i don't know why this this locomotive goes up and down like a yo-yo first it's really really good then it's really really bad then it's really really good then it's really really bad and i cannot keep track of why they do what they do but anyway it's a little bit weaker now so i'm actually struggling going basically on flat ground with all these cars where literally yesterday i was doing just fine so no idea whether they decided to change that halfway through, but whatever. They've also added in the caboose. Which you can actually see over here in the background because I've already bought one and it won't let me go over there. Isn't that cute? Now I don't know if this is going to be a temporary thing or if it's permanent. It I don't know what they say by bobber caboose, but I can't wait to get back to the main to the main freight house and uh, look at it. But it does look really, really nice. I like that it has brakes on both ends, and it looks like it also has a brake right there in the middle where somebody can sit up there and man the. Oh, it's difficult trying to navigate. Uh, I'm trying to look down, and I'm probably derailed already. Oh shit. I don't think I've lost any cars. I'm going to have to do a count when I get to the bottom of the hill. But anyway, they've also added in the freight house. Let's go back into the menu. Break off. So they've added in this uh, engine shed, which they have in bunch of different colors it looks like but I've only really played around with it in one or two colors I can't wait to actually integrate that in with where I have my locomotive stored I think that's gonna be cool let's count our cars right quick one two eleven twelve so Yep, we have all of our cars still, none of them derailed, which is good because that's a notorious spot for derailing, as is right down here by the uh, by the loop right there. 
you can see I added in another trestle bridge right there. I need to rework this entire line. I don't know if you can see the crosshairs in, in my screen, but I need to update that. I don't like, I don't like how that looks. Let's slow down a bit in here. Well, let's talk about how I have this train configured also. So as you can see, I have the uh, iron ore cars, the hopper cars in front, and I have the uh, lumber cars in back. That, honestly, I found that this just works best. Now, I realize that this would probably not be 100% realistic because, especially if we change to first person right here, you can see that it is... Kind of difficult to see around. Now you can sort of peek your head out when you're not getting left behind. Why am I glitching through right there? Let's try the other side. You can kind of stick your head out and you can kind of look around, but it is not the easiest to see out of. The other side is not much better. So this is, isn't truly realistic to how they would probably run it but for me it works so you can see just how much they nerfed the porter which I get they kind of needed to nerf it because this locomotive is a tad overpowered I'm hoping to hop on with my buddy, uh, with my buddy who also has this Loki, who has his own account, and I'm hoping we can run enough cars up here to have four hopper cars and enough to do 42 of each beam and lumber. So 42 divided by three, that's 10, 14 beam cars, seven lumber cars, and four hopper cars. Gotta be careful going here also, going down this hill. A tad tedious, especially at the bottom, there's a little bit of a beaver tail action that loves to push cars off the, uh, off the hill. One thing I would recommend for any of you guys who are playing this game, lock up the brakes on your back car. It kind of smooths out the, uh, the waves that travel through the uh that travel through the cars i i've i think i've i've mentioned before how when the betsy or the other locomotive shakes it kind of ripples down the train now if you keep your back car braked up it doesn't ripple as bad and it keeps it a lot more taut on top of that when you're going down these hills you have to imagine that the that the cars are pushing slash pulling for these ones in front the locomotive down well if they push too hard down it can cause them to derail which happens right here a lot i think i need to smooth that out you can kind of see it it was not happy right there i need to re i need to look into that why it why they were popping out there I think I, I think the train is just getting too long. I think that's what the biggest problem is, is that the train is just too long for a single for a single lineup. For me doing this by myself, it's just too long. Which kind of sucks because I, I really want to get it so that I can just run a bunch of iron ore down because the the stockpile down here is so large, but sometimes you can't always get what you want. I think just sticking so that I'm making, so that I'm pulling 20 ore down and 
make an 18 or I think it's probably going to be the best. Although I'd rather make more, uh, I'd rather make more iron ore than what I'm, than what I'm delivering just because of the fact that you do lose some when you're loading. So, as you can see, we have our layout down here. That's... Uh, we're breaking. I think that'll be pretty much perfect. Yep. Unload. Unload. I'm gonna need to back up. I don't want to lose any of my iron ore. It's so, it's so much of a pain to get. Forward, break off, regulator. Don't turn the rear brake off. It's it's kind of weird because if you leave two brakes on, it's too much. If you leave one brake on, it's not enough. So. One thing I've thought about doing is taking this rail line and not trying to get it right next to it right here, but just trying to get it to go like right like this so that they land right here and it adds up. But I don't know. I really don't want to do this whole shunting thing. So I might have to might have to revamp this a little bit, but luckily it'll just be this little corner right here and it won't be this entire thing. I like the way that the backside turned out over there. Extra water tower, which can probably be demolished. I used that as a marker for when I was, when I had my hopper cars on the back of the train. Made it a little bit easier to try and line them up. All right, let's get some speed going. Eventually, that switch right there is gonna go up around over here, up this valley, where if I hop out of the cab, if we open up the map, you can kind of see that valley goes up and over by the sawmill, up north of the sawmill, and goes towards the logging camp. I hope to link that up to the logging camp so I can run cordwood kind of on like an express line really really quick and just continue just boom 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 the uh, get the uh cordwood in out delivered and go back for more Yeah, before also the porter had no problem going up this hill at like 40%. Now I'm at 63% and I still don't think it's enough. I'm going to admit the porter is OP. It was OP, it was overpowered. But it was still kind of nice to have this really simple locomotive that just performed. I did notice that they... I, So I don't know what they...
They set the climax or the Heisler's top speed to seven meters per second. I don't know what. I don't know what the. I don't know what the Porter does as far as regular speed, but I know the Heisler is slow. But it might be worth getting if this one is nerfed as bad as it is. I don't think I'm going to be able to stop on the hill to go and flip the switch. I'm going to have to try and do a rolling switch, which I think I need to keep this at like 45 or 50. I don't want to have a runaway train going backwards. I think this is just too much for this locomotive. I think I need to I think I need to read to reduce my expectations just a little bit. I know this episode's probably getting a little long. I mean this take is already at 17 minutes and most of my episodes are like 30 minutes. Add that on to 40 minutes of content already. Whew. Hour long show coming up. And no, I don't want the reverser. Don't even look back, don't even look back, just. Alright, we're back up at the top of the hill. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to smash that like button. I'm proud to say that I'm at 350 subscribers. It's not as many as I want, but I want to thank each and every one of you guys for the uh, for giving me your time and attention and just saying wanted to say happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Feliz Navidad, all the all the goodness. So anyway, take care, stay safe, and I hope to see you all next time when I hope to have a buddy on. I don't know, I'm still trying to wrangle him on. <laughs>